I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture about the case Spectre versus Norwegian Cruise Lines, a U.S. Supreme Court case from 2005. We're talking about the scope and application of the substantive canons of construction. This is a lecture for my statutory interpretation and regulation class, um, or sometimes called leg reg. And here we're going to be talking about sort of the Supreme Court applying a canon, but only as the statute is applied or to certain as applied instances of the statute. So let's look at what happens in this case. So our statute here is the Americans with Disabilities Act and specifically Title III of that act. And it requires that places of public accommodation and uh, public transport services make reasonable modifications, I'm quoting here, um, in policies, practices, and procedures to accommodate disabled individuals. And the statute also requires the removal of architectural barriers or other structural barriers that can make it difficult to access the place or create access issues, but only if the removal is readily achievable. So there, um, and that's part of what's contested in this case is this is about cruise lines and cruise ships and the cruise lines were saying that the accommodations that were being asked for were, <clears throat> um, uh, were gonna be costly. They were, would probably have said some are not readily achievable and the ones that were, um, were basically going to be very expensive to do or um, uh, difficult or labor intensive. And so the ex statutory definitions of public accommodation and public transportation don't specifically mention cruise ships, but all the parties involved agreed that United States cruise ships would be covered under the statute, would fall under the general definitions of these terms. And so the issue here is um, really for ships that sail under foreign flags and specifically foreign flags of convenience. So the ship may be owned by an American company. It may pr principally carry American um, uh, passengers and so forth, but it flies under a flag from the Bahamas, for example. Um, the passengers here um, qualified as disabled under the statutory definitions of the Americans with Disabilities Act, and <clears throat> they claimed that they were actually charged higher fares than other customers, that they were required to uh, sign liability waivers that other customers didn't have to sign, um, that they, their contracts actually uh, said that they were subject to removal uh, for the comfort of other passengers, if other passengers complained or requested it, and um, they couldn't reserve the best cabins on the ship and they couldn't access certain parts of the cruise ship. Now, the reason this is in our um, uh, statutory interpretation casebook is because it involves, the opinion involves a, a, a canon or of construction that uh, basically says that federal statutes like the ADA shouldn't apply to foreign flagged ships that just happen to be in US territorial waters. And so, in other words, there's kind of a whole body of case law about extraterritorial application of American statutes. And the Supreme Court has traditionally used a canon that says, if an American statute or law is going to apply to a foreign flagged vessel in US territorial waters, um, there has to be a clear statement of intent from Congress. And this is part of a larger set of foreign relations canons, um, most of which we're not gonna study in our course, but you should be aware that they're out there. The court here issued a pretty fractured opinion. So there's a narrow majority on certain parts and uh, only a plurality on other parts because of the concurring and dissenting opinions. But the overall result, and especially for our purposes, is that most of the ADA claims are applicable. The, the most don't relate to internal operations of a ship, um, but the court concedes that for any of the complaints that really affect the internal operations of a ship that's flying, flying under a foreign flag, that um, for example, structural changes on board, the canon um, applies, which means the statute would not. So the canon is basically a canon that limits the application of the statute or excludes um, the statute from being applied uh, in certain circum circumstances. And so uh, Justice Kennedy applied the clear statement rule to construe um, this, uh, these federal statutes um, so as to not interfere with the internal affairs of a foreign vessel absent a clear statement. 
Um, on the other hand, he said, a clear statement is not required to apply a general statute to a foreign vessel for matters pertaining principally to the, quote, peace of the port. In other words, for any accommodations that really relate to making reservations or um, boarding procedures or docks, getting on board and off board the ship, but don't really deal with just internal operations when the ship is out at sea, those claims can go forward. It's only the ones that relate to a, a claim um, that's uh, about the internal affairs that we're going to prevent because of that canon. Um, an interesting feature of this case if, if, that you might wanna uh, take a note of is that it relies on a couple of immigration cases as opposed to disability cases. If you're looking for these in the, in the case in your casebook, it's where the court discusses Zedvitas v. Davis and Clark v. Martinez um, to decide uh, this issue of the limited applicability of, of a canon of statutory interpretation. And so the, uh, what they drew from those cases was not a substantive rule of law about disability accommodations, but rather the idea that a canon of construction um, could be applied uh, to certain applications of a statute and not to others. In other words, it doesn't have to apply every time the statute um, is, uh, is brought up or is invoked in a lawsuit. So in other words, the question is if we have a statute and certain canons, and, and then we have a canon that basically says this, uh, this statute shouldn't apply to certain parties, for example, like uh, foreign uh, ships uh, flying under for, that are in, uh, happen to be in US waters, but maybe aren't docked at our ports or something like that. And so does that make the whole, the statute entirely inoperable or, can we kind of break it into parts and say that the statute applies to certain applications of the statute, if it, to when the statute would affect internal operations of the ship, but not when the statute would apply docking when it, um, people disembarking from the ship or boarding the ship or things like that. And that's the interesting part of the case from a st uh, the standpoint of statutory interpretation in general. And that's why the court invokes these other cases is for the idea that you can have a canon of statutory interpretation that rules out certain sort of as applied um, uses of a statutory provision, but leaves others in place or leaves the statute in effect for things that really don't run afoul of the canon. And so that actually concludes our discussion of this uh, case, Spectre versus Norwegian uh, Cruise Lines.